Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Vero Axon Frame Lock, which is uh, <clears throat> exactly like it sounds. It's the Vero Axon, except, um, you know, how they did it with uh, some of the other models, the little bolster lock or faux bolster lock. Uh, it's a full frame lock. Um, so that does make it a little different. I think there's some other differences as well, but I want to give you guys my thoughts on it, and that's what we're going to do today. Uh, thank you so much to Chris for sending this in for review, and thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. How do you get these? How do you get Vero knives? Uh, Vero, 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 sorry. Um, you need to follow um, Vero Engineering on Instagram. Uh, and I would also go check out their website. But Vero does a great job about posting when things are going to drop. Um, if you're expecting a Vero to fall into your lap, it will not do that. Uh, if you don't want to make an Instagram, that's fine. Um, but you'll be at a disadvantage. That's the easiest way. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think the people who have been following and paying attention have had that much trouble getting their hands on one. Um, but uh, he does uh, models, um, you know, the from what I've seen, from my perspective, um, there's a pretty healthy pace, uh, pretty good uh, regularity of drops and things like that. So um, you may have to wait a bit to get the exact model you want, but um, he does make a lot of stuff and he drops things fairly frequently. So that's the best way to do that. Let's go ahead and measure this guy. Overall length... Uh, the axon, I think it's probably about the same as the, you can check out my review of the original axon too. Eight inches with a three and a half inch blade and the cutting edge is about three, just shy of three and a quarter. Um, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the, um, well, well, why not? Let's do the PM2 first today. Up against the PM2 and Para 3, you can see here, it's a full size knife, but it's a little shorter than the PM2. How about up against the Ontario Rats model one and the Rat 2? Uh, definitely a little shorter than the Rat 1, but also much larger than the Rat 2. And uh, how about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ruder Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Out. Is, <coughs> excuse me, I went on a jog this morning, and I'm still, my lungs are still recovering from that. Um, but uh, yeah, overall length on this guy, it's very similar to the uh, Ruder Hogue. It just has a completely different shape. It looks like the Cybertruck. Yeah, everybody thinks that and everybody says that. Thank you. Get it out of your system. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, how about a couple more? I own a couple of Veros. I do like these knives. Here's the Synapse XL and the Isotope, which are both very, I would say they're large knives, right? So the Axon is not quite the same size, though I will say this, I think we need a big boy Axon. I think we need an Axon. It would be cool to see one that uh, was about nine and a quarter inches. Um, uh, you know, or put this blade on the um, the Isotope Integral Frame. I think that that would be really cool and that people would really like that because this guy is also a frame lock. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, obviously there's more involved in that than just like slapping a blade on a frame. It doesn't... It, that's there's more to consider there but i would like to see a larger one i think that that would be really cool but this is a good size um let's go ahead and do uh carry profile so thickness up against the spider co para 3 you can see here it's really pretty thin and i wonder if that's one of the things that they changed from the original accent i feel like the original was a bit thicker both in the scales and in the blade so this guy's definitely thinner which is cool because the para 3 is not hard to carry but this guy is going to be even thinner uh length and height up against the pm2 and para 3 you can see here it's really it's not very tall you know even with this blade uh it's still quite a bit shorter than the uh big hump in the pm2 or para 3 it's it's also longer in the body a little bit than the uh para 3 but yeah good stuff there uh, let's take a look at the inside here real quick. Where's that flashlight? There it is. You can get my flashlight down in the description. There is some uh, internal milling going on, if you can see that in there. Um, we have it on actually both sides. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, some little pockets. So that's nice. Titanium and M390. No, the clip and backspacer are not stock. The owner let me know that he bought those um, from... Uh, sometimes, Vero, like my isotope came with this stuff. 
But he does sell the clip and backspacer separately if you want to pay for a Timascus clip and backspacer. That looks like that's that's what happened here. Um, or, in fact, the note says that's exactly what happened. The original clip and backspacer were black wash, uh, both of them, just like the blade. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and measure that blade stock thickness real quick so I can give you guys a... It looks like it's about 120 thousandths or so. Let's find out. No, 135 thousandths. Maybe it's just my imagination. That's I think that's probably about the same thickness as the other one, but I, I honestly can't remember. Not a thick blade, but also not necessarily a thin blade stock. Um, but, uh, you know, for how much knife you're getting here, it doesn't feel super duper heavy. It doesn't feel super duper bulky. 4.34 ounces. Okay. Um, not perfect ratios, but still definitely not a heavy object in my book. Not something you're going to want to wear with athletic shorts or fitted pants. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, pretty good. Uh, do with that information what you will. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. Get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. Uh, you can get them right down in the description, the section that talks about my tools. Somebody the other day was like, can you just put the bit in the, uh, <laughs> can you just put it in there without having to put it in the driver? No, I like putting it in the driver. And that's what you would do anyway if you were going to adjust it. I understand that I'm not adjusting it. I'm just testing all, these are all T8 by the way. But I still want to do that. I want people to have good tools because I don't like hearing people say, I tried to take apart my blah, 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 and it's stripped because they're using some, you know, wheels are good and that, that driver is good. I want people to see it. It's cheap. It's a cheap way to make sure that you are able to uh, disassemble your knives uh, without having anything strip out. So, no, I'm going to keep showing it. <laughs> but I understand the logic of the complaint. Anyways. Um, yeah, all T8, that's great. And minimal hardware too. Um, we have a hidden uh, screw holding in the um, the uh, pocket clip. If you can see, I don't know if you can see in there, but yeah, the screws for that are on the inside. So you'd have to take the scales off and then release the pocket clip from the inside. But you are working with all T8 hardware and it appears to be the case with the uh, screws on the inside. I don't know that for sure, but everything else, T8, that's great. Don't have a problem with that at all. Um, have we done everything there? I think think that we have. Okay, let's move on to the meat and potatoes here. So this is a front flipper and uh, it has this little deployment rectangle, which I actually really like. A lot of people don't like it, right? You can get the forward flick with it kind of. I'm not very good at doing the forward flick, but reverse flick? Yeah, no problem. And lefties? You can do it too, right? Because the it's got the thing on, it's, it's not just on one side. Like the... Um, like my uh, uh, Synapse XL, it's it's only on one side. And same with the Isotope, it, the it's, it's just on one side. This guy's on both, so that's fine. Uh, you can also just wheel it out like a normal person. A lot of people say that the detent feels weak. I mean, can it be shaken out? I mean, yeah, you, it can be, but the only time that you really need to worry about that is you, if you plan on sprinting with the knife in your pocket, right? The detent, I think, is strong enough uh, for the design. It definitely is, I would call it more of like a medium or light medium. If it had a flipper, it might be, need to be a little bit stronger. It's definitely not quite as strong as a detent as on my um, Synapse, Synapse XL. Uh, but I think I would prefer this exact same. You can see here, here's the Synapse XL. You can you can see it visually. It, it's just a heavier detent. It's more of a clicky detent. This is a little softer and kind of has a thud at the bottom. It's there. There's no detent play. I think it should be a little bit heavier though. I think it would it would feel a little bit better. It doesn't need it. I mean, it, obviously it's easy to deploy, but it would just. I, I think it would feel a little bit better to have a a heavier detent on this and other similar models from Vero. I don't I don't like a thud at the bottom. I want more of a distinct click. It makes me feel like it's really in there, but it's good enough. Um, very easy to deploy, very easy to manipulate. The front flipper works just fine. Uh, ergonomically, it's all right. These, uh, these edges come down to, they're not sharp angles, they're just abrupt angles. So when you're holding this, right, the main thing here is this pocket clip. And I've said this before, it's the same clip that's on my Synapse. And it's the same clip, I'm sorry, the isotope and the same clip that's on the Synapse. 
I think these clips are a bit long and I think this is a bit, if, you, if it was shortened up, you wouldn't feel it nearly as much there, but just that how it comes up and then straight, right? And then it's squared off. It's not sharp, but you can definitely feel it. So that clip combined with, like it's definitely made for the human hand and it's not uncomfortable. These edges are just kind of abrupt, but the it's done like that to achieve a certain aesthetic, right? We have this very modern, sleek, and almost like, I don't know, something that might come out of a science fiction movie that's, you know, it, it's got that futuristic look, but it's also utilitarian. Uh, there's room in here to uh, get your fingers where you want and choke up. Not much of a guard here, so you do have to kind of watch out, but you can choke up, you can choke back. It's kind of an open you know, kind of a blank canvas, uh, suggestions on where you should put your hands and not demands, right? I hate like, you know, I always use the Boker Kalashnikov. Four distinct areas for your fingers. You have to put your fingers right here. Let me put my hands where I want. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's 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 okay. Um, so it's one of those things with balance between achieving a look and, um, you know, making the ergonomics as comfortable as possible. I think that if the clip were shorter and not quite this this goose bill uh, thing going on, I think it would be a lot easier on the hands. But it's it's fine if you're going to use this knife really hard for an extended period of time, which you can. This is absolutely a workhorse of a knife. Um, then wear gloves. You're going to want to, right? It's kind of thin, kind of abrupt angles. Uh, aesthetically, it looks very good. I I like this, and I think that I mean it's one of those things where. The benefit of a lock like this is it's a lot like a frame lock, except that you don't have to worry nearly as much about where your fingers are, right? You don't, you can apply pressure right here because the scale's covering that area of the lock. Whereas on this guy, it isn't. However, it's not likely you're going to put your hands on the frame lock while you're deploying it because, I mean, maybe if you do this, right? If you deploy with your index finger over here, you are putting pressure on there. But if you're going to use this little rectangle back here, it's not likely. Be, I mean, if your hands do this, all your fingers are totally off this area uh, and you're just deploying it. So I don't know. The frame lock thing, it's like, it, was it needed? Like, the des, did the design need to be a frame lock? Was it bad as a faux bolster lock or whatever it was before? Was it a line? I can't remember. It, it was a while ago that I did the accent. Um, it didn't need it, but it's it's there. Some people just really like the frame lock look. It's not hurting anything. I mean, the, the knife definitely does function as a frame lock, right? It's just more of a, it's not an advancement. It's just a side, it's just a sidestep, right? It's, it's running right alongside it. Uh, the blade looks good. They have black wash blades. They've got belt satin. You're going to pay a little more for belt satin. You're going to pay a little more for hand rub satin. You're not going to pay any more for stone washed, which is actually what I prefer. I think the stone washed finish is the best finish that he does, and it doesn't cost anything extra. That's beautiful to me, I, I love that. But if you wanna pay extra for a different finish, then you can do that. And it looks good. Who's the OEM on this? It's Best Deck. Uh, I think most people know that by now. Some people are okay with that, some people aren't. Whatever, make your own choices, right? Best Deck does a good job. Um, they have shown here lately, especially through Vero, that they are capable of some serious production quality. Um, so in some cases, like the isotope here, um, we're talking like Riot level quality, or that's my, not everybody's going to agree with me, but that's my judgment on that is, wow, you know, this still feels like a best deck, right? There's, for whatever reason, these two guys feel more best decky, more traditional best decky, and this guy, the isotope feels more Riot. Um, I don't know why, uh, but that, that is the case there. This these, this guy is substantially less expensive than the isotope, though, so there you go. Um, yeah, seating of everything looks good. Overall fit and finish is great. I don't have a problem with any of that. Um, these are numbered, and you can see them back here. This is 369. Uh, I love that he puts his, um, you know, maker's mark, his logo right there on the spine so that we don't have anything on the blade. There's nothing. There's no words or codes or anything like that. That's beautiful. We get to enjoy the look of it, right? Which is, that's what makes Vero's stand out because they have a different aesthetic. So I like that. This blade shape is probably the most utilitarian of all the blade. This is the most EDC oriented blade shape because I've always said, you know, what we generally, not everybody, but you're, you're every man like me. I, I feel like I represent a pretty common, you know, 
just a guy who carries a pocket knife. Uh, for cutting open boxes and packages, maybe maybe a couple of different things here and there, but like for draw cuts and shaping cuts, things like that, it's really great. And resharpening should be a breeze because it's just a straight, almost a perfectly straight. I think there's some slight curvature out here, but yeah, it'll slice, it'll cut. It's not unbelievably like, oh my gosh, razor thin at the edge, but it does taper nicely and it does get fairly thin down there. So you can definitely still slice with it. Not much of a tip, but hey, he's got other models, right? So if you want to draw a point, you want something more pointy, then go with something else. If you want something like this, well, there, there you go, then the accent. I'm not perfectly familiar with his entire line, um, but uh, I, I think the accent is the only one right now that has this exact blade shape. Uh, back here, we have a backspacer that runs the entire length of the knife. I think it looks cool. Um, I think that I don't know. Is it, I almost said maybe the backspacer is part... Because here's the thing. The knife is not balanced under the pivot. The knife is balanced back here. It's not bad, right? Having less backspacer might help that a little bit. Obviously, not having the entire thing be titanium would make it more balanced. But then again, it's like, does it really need it? Is it really like that? I don't know. Not really. It does look like, nice, though. The standard um, pocket clip... I'm sorry. The standard backspacer on this guy would have been blackwashed or probably contrasting to whatever setup you got for the blade. Pocket clip would look exactly like the blade. Um, so, yeah. Uh, in this case, though, they're Timascus. And, yeah, those are expensive. You want the pocket clip and backspacer set, I think... I, I don't know what exactly what they cost. 150 bucks, something like that. I'm not really sure. You'd have to check the website. Um, but that's a choice that you can make. Um, when these, you know, become available again. There is a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop, which is nice. Um, the lock up is coming in at, what are we at here? 35, 40%, maybe something like that. Um, there is no movement, no play, uh, in this at all. And I did, he, he had mentioned in, in the note, he said, there's a little bit of blade play, um, but that's because I have the pivot loosened up to have more of the fall shutty action. And truthfully, even after tightening it, it, it's still fine to me. I don't necessarily need, um, the knives to be perfectly fall shut. Like the, the isotope is like that. And part of it, I think is that it's a heavier blade, but I also feel like there's some, something else going on with the isotope. And then this guy, the, uh, uh, the Synapse XL feels very similar to the accent. It's just like a slight wiggle, right? Um, but yeah, you can, I mean, after tightening this, it does, it is now, you know, solid and there's no flex up and down. In some cases with some of these bolster locks, you'll get a little bit of flex. It's not really, and I think it's because it's so thin right here. The contact is, there's lots of surface area to contact it, but then it gets so thin in here, um, that it, it wants to flex a little bit with this entire bar being so robust. And I understand it does get thinner at the relief cut, but it's the, there's more robustness there. So these, the frame lock versions don't flex at all. Um, so yeah, that's the case there. Uh, like I said, no detent lash, no pivot lash. And then we do have a stop pin back here and the blade wraps nicely around it or shoulders around it. So that's good. What do these come in at? $325 at base. Yeah, that's, it's, it's a bit high. And here's the thing, you know, it's common, you know, the most common thing that you hear in, in any enthusiast territory is that's overpriced. That's too much for that. And, and, you know, everybody calls for less. Well, no matter where he puts the price, right. He can't, he can't make money on it at, you know, with the, bringing this down to 180 bucks. It's not, <laughs> he can't. Still a small operation, right? It's not like he can order, you know, like if, okay. I don't know exactly what it costs, but I would imagine it would cost an enormous amount of money to have Best Tech make 10,000 of these, right? I don't know if the demand is high enough for, uh, you know, him to sell 10,000 of them. So if he knew that he could, number one, pay for and immediately sell 10,000 of them, then sure, I'm sure the price could be a little bit less. But as a growing brand and business, right, there's only so many he's going to order uh, because, number one, he has to pay for it. And number two, he has to make sure that people are going to buy them. And obviously, the demand is high enough. So it, as, as the business grows, as, as Vero Engineering grows, maybe he can do more of them, right? Maybe the you know price could stabilize. You have to, I mean, as we progress in time, inflation and all that. So any, anyways, what I'm saying here, this is just going to light up more arguments. 
I generally don't take the side of I want it to be less. Sometimes I do, but rather in this case, I, I think that's a bit high. I think for exactly this, right around the 260 to 280, but I don't know that I want that. What I think would be cool is this exactly, but an inlay or a texture pattern, and specifically in this area right here. This, it does look good, I like it, but I, I feel like this area right here is just calling for something extra. I think it would look cool to have a carbon fiber inlay, right? Or um, just an area where maybe, and you know, some people are gonna disagree with me, but just like a diagonal uh, texture pattern or a diamond texture pattern or something. Some extra milling in here, maybe if they uh, mill a line and, and sort of highlight this area and then within there you do some type of pattern or inlay. I think that'd be cool and it'd make me feel a little bit better about spending $325. It's kind of plain. The knife itself is a good design and it works. It's not the most ergonomically friendly thing in the entire world in that pocket clip. I just think it's too big. I think it needs to be shorter and I think this area needs to all use the, once again, the MXG deep carry clip is just the right length and it's not offensive down here and it has the right curvature and it doesn't stick up quite as far, you know, and I think that would have been a little bit better. Um, but overall, good. Uh, pri price is just a bit high. I don't know that I'm going to tell people to rush out and, you know, jump on this. I think the, the best value that I've felt um, through Vero has been the Synapse XL. That really feels like what what it was. And if I'm not mistaken, it was, this was a 320, 350, you know, that one felt good to me, right? It had the complexity that I wanted. It had the feeling, the overall quality that I wanted and, and all of it. it was everything together. I'm not saying that the accent's not high quality. It just, this frame lock version feels a little bit lacking for 325 bucks. Still every bit as high quality as I expect Vero uh, knives to be. Um, it's, it's this whole, everything that I'm saying sounds kind of pretentious right now. Um, but I, I still like this. I think uh, for those of you, it's like I say in, in a lot of my reviews, if you're looking at this and going, I love how that looks. Um, I, uh, I, you know, all the things that he's saying, you know, the stuff that bothers him, I don't think it would bother me that much. I love how it looks. I just want to make sure that it's made well. It is. And so if that's you and you buy this, you're going to be happy with it. But if some of the things that I'm complaining about, if that's stuff that bothers you on other knives, right, uh, or you're looking at this and thinking, yeah, it does kind of seem like it's a little underwhelming, right? There's There needs to be more going on here. Then, yeah, you know, that's the boat that I'm in. So, Vero Engineering, Engineering as a company, uh, yeah, very happy with the um, quality and the models they bring. I think it's really cool and it's different enough that it's you know, exciting. Every time he does something different, it makes me want to pay attention to it. Um, I don't think, yeah, I don't think I'm going to tell people to rush out and buy this one. I think it's, I think it's a bit high. needs more going on. Um, sure. You know, it's like if he brought it down to 265 or so, would I be like shouting it at the top of a mountain? No, still not really because it's still, it's still kind of just, it's just a little bit boring. So that's what I, that's what I mean when I say, I'd rather it just stay at the same price and have more character going on, right? There's a lot of character here, but it I just it needs something it needs to be a little bit more busy, I think in here. That's just for me though, and that's an aesthetic thing, right? So it's like it's that critique is not going to apply universally to everybody. But that's those are my honest thoughts. Still very cool. Um, and, uh, again, thank you very much to Chris for sending this in, uh, so that I could take a look at it. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it today. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.